Well, hello and welcome to Cinnamon Toast Crunch. Uh, we've got a bit of a banger for you today. Well, I, I, well, I, I certainly hope it is. We'll see how that goes down. But yes, big one for you today. Um, I spent a good portion of last night trying to prepare for the stream. I've never, I've never prepared so long for a video. Uh, but hopefully it'll be a good one. I'm sure you'll let me know. But of course, I'm not on my own today. We are with the Null Zone. I know he doesn't deal with praise very well. But this guy is the reason I'm here doing this channel. So, of course, very glad to have him on. I said I was going to get him on at some point. I wasn't going to forget, you know, I look after people who look after me. So, yeah. So, we've got a big one today, Noel, haven't we? So, obviously, we'll, we'll get... We'll we do one, Dave. Let's not, let's not muck about. Let's go straight in. We've got 56 screenshots, if I believe, here in counting. Um, yes. Of course, I wanted to be safe. I didn't know quite if i'd be all right so i thought I'd, a little copyright issue in the corner just in case they do get a bit awkward um but yeah stark tower <laughs> it, it, it's, a, it's a thing isn't it with disney um, uh, um we were analyzing it earlier just on brendan's stream and it seems to me that there's a few little things creeping in from other little from other short shows other franchises and you know this is one of them i mean come on that, that it's stark tower how anyone can any think anything otherwise of this you do, you know, know. do you know what the funny thing about this image is i think people forget as well that uh when we first met unit in classic coup it was a secret organization now they're just like oh everybody could knows now that unit exists which i've ne never really went down well with me uh in new who the fact that unit was kind of known it's supposed to be a secret organization isn't it that is a nice shot but isn't that that we were speculating on the cliff, the TARDIS there on the cliff last night, weren't we on our member stream? Um, it does look like it could be because remember, uh, Jodie Whittaker regenerated on a on a cliff, and uh, some are speculating, which we'll get into it. But that image in particular is of interest because, you know, as Brendan pointed out, uh, there is a reference to this. Actually, the TARDIS being a bit of a, a what you call it, a monument and a and a place to go. So, yeah, interesting. Looks beautiful, though. Uh, I mean, that's the one thing we can say yeah, about this. It's, it's a running theme, isn't it? In this in this trailer, we, we, there's a lot of beautiful shots, and it's we see this again. We see it here, and I think the TARDIS looks fine because we did see um, a few behind the scenes shots um, of filming, and I think Shooty. I think it was the first time we actually saw Shooty because we were saying, weren't we? Oh, it was all Millie doing stuff and we didn't really see much of Shooty. And then we finally mm. saw him in a big giant coat all wrapped up warm, I think on this cliff. Um, so it, it, this it, this shot appears here at the start of the trailer and it also appears at the end. Of, and I'm sure we'll get into that a little bit later when it's all battered and old and decrepit. But just moving on again, there were, it, throughout, there were saw routinely actually throughout the trailer that we were, they were showing clips of the previous story so again we, we all saw this this shooty picking up the drink um yeah millie looking rather pleased with it all um I, oh, and then because we were discussing actually earlier about when the tardis dematerialized and um mrs flood anita dobson's character we were saying you know was she actually surprised because you know a police box has just literally disappeared in front of her, so the average person would be surprised, except for that police officer, if you remember. But you know, mm -hmm. was she surprised to see it dematerialize, or was she surprised because she'd seen it before? That was another thing, a little you know, a bit into context that we were discussing there. I thought it was quite interesting. Um, and of course, we can see that the doctor does occasionally dematerialize. It, just, it isn't just whizzing about the place, as we can see, it, it is crashing into. Um, it is, yeah, crashing into yeah. a wall again. Yeah, it is a bit inconsistent, isn't it? Because we we can see, and I, I made this comment, how the Doctor can fly his TARDIS into the perfectly into Unit Tower without hurting anyone, like a Rolls Royce going up the driveway, as I said, but then crashes into the roof here. I mean, that roof is probably been fixed and repaired and broken all over again. Um, uh, what I you, mean, you, yeah, for a I was just going to say, for a small flat, you know, a, a, a woman that takes in adoptive kids and she has her, her old mother there, um, it does seem that the place does seem to get battered quite a lot now, doesn't it? I mean, shoot, as you mentioned, the roof, 
caves in, the ceiling caves in. Now we've got the TARDIS crashed into the the flat. They must be the most unlucky family out there. <laughs> it's got to be. God, God only knows how much this is costing them. Uh, they Jesus, don't seem like the type of people who've got lots of money either. They seem like the... That's what I mean. Ends me or whatever they were trying to say in the in the, in the episode. They're getting by. Ah, oh, yeah, when they turned our yeah. horrible. <laughs> it's, it's like, she, like we all like the character because some people out there that have uh, were adopted would relate to this woman, uh, you know, because there's women like her all over the world that do adopt kids. But then when she changed and he made her out to be this horrible person that was only taking the babies because of a check, that that was disgusting, you know, um, in my opinion, but. You know, it's twenty. Yeah, I know you were quite strongly say? about that, didn't you? Um, yeah. Of course. Again, more shots of previous yeah. episodes. I mean, the TARDIS I mean, that... looks lovely. Let's be honest. But Brendan did make a point, and you made it's gone very spaceshipy, hasn't it? It's not. It's it doesn't look organic anymore. You know, New Who has done that pretty well. It's looked kind of organic, or or. It hasn't been as bright looking as as this, and maybe some people are happy, but the lights and everything change different colors on this as well. I mean, what the reasons are behind that? Why don't you just make the lights TARDIS blue? Yeah, Do you know what I mean. I the it background, white in your TARDIS, doesn't it? You know, some people like that home. If I mean, McGann's TARDIS was like it's like a house, it's like a like a sort of old mansion, and then of course still the best even, TARDIS. Even with Capaldi's as well, he, even he spruced up a little bit, put shells around, put chalkboards around, a little, was it Beethoven's head or whatever it was, you know, it spruced it up a little bit. I think this is a, visually it looks fantastic in my opinion. It looks sterile. It looks a little bit empty. And this thing, yeah, it looks a little bit too clean. And yeah. you know, I don't mind it looking spaceship. It is a futuristic, you know, Gallifrey and piece of technology. Just make it, put a chair in there, something that, you know. Make, yeah, make it a little bit more homely. If he made it a bit more homely, you know, it'd be great. But these windy stairs, I just don't see the point of it. I know they're trying to show the TARDIS is bigger in the inside, and I get that. But these windy stairs as well just look like it's just a waste of space, man. And they actually like need so to use for them space. just to run around in. They actually need to use it because there's no point having it be massive for massive sake. They actually need yeah, to but they will it. use it. David Tennant ran around it. He thought it was yeah. a racetrack. That's what will happen, though. They chases in the TARDIS, though, Will, and, and they'll be chasing each other around the bloody TARDIS, like. Yeah, indeed. Indeed, indeed. Um, job, by the way. So he looks one. well there. I, I yeah. will admit, that shot is a beautiful shot. And whatever his reaction is there, though, that was the one part of the trailer when I saw that reaction. I was like, oh, what is he actually looking at? What has horrified him so much that he well, has that reaction? And then, obviously, we kind of I see a little bit changed. later on. I think we, we looked at it on the sense for you, and we, we, we compared the images and what you what might have been looking at. And we uh, the, the common consensus there is that you might be looking at Jinx, because there's a certain shot where Jinx just, like, quickly turns the head. Um, so whether he's looking at that. But the, the, this this particular part of the trail is quite it's quite rapid, because we've got this yeah. shot, and then we get this one, which looks a bit like it's June. Um, maybe he was trying out for that. Um you know, it's quite quick. Second, but hold quite on, quick. hold on now that you've put this here, Roy. What was the name of that episode with the killer sheets in the Jodie Whittaker era? Uh, Ghost Monument. The something conundrum, the bleeding, whatever, every, the, the thing that nobody could say, the something conundrum, wasn't it? The one with the killer sheets, yeah, do you remember? Ghost yeah, Ghost Monument. Oh, was it the Ghost Monument? Roy, but look at the background. It's very fucking similar, isn't it? Yeah, it remi- I remember seeing this. It, this reminded me of, I think it was the time as a child, and then when they met the old man, that Jodie basically left for dead um, and was happy for more than... You know what I was thinking, Cinnamon? What if um, Shooty's doctor is, is actually... There must be... I think there's a delay. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, I was going to say... Um, do you know what I'm starting to suspect? It's a little theory. Obviously, Brendan had one. My theory is, I think, that, that Shooty's doctor is basically going back along the doctor, the old doctor's timelines. And this is where all of this, you know, we've heard the rumor he's gone to uh, 
uh, uh, go back to some of his old stuff and, and put a, a modern, diverse twist on it. So maybe that's what he's doing. Because some, some of this, like, we've got the dinosaurs as well. Like, you know, we did have an, an episode, Dinosaurs on the Spaceship, wasn't it? Or whatever it was fucking called. So, yeah, I don't know if it seems a lot familiar about that. I don't, or maybe I'm, I'm going down the wrong avenue here. But it just seems to me that Chewie's doctor is bouncing from other doctors' timelines and trying to fix maybe issues that happened back then. And he's got he's gone back to make things right. Yeah. Uh, of course, we've got another one of these quick pictures. I mean, what, what this could only mean, you know, baffles me. I mean, no, I've said it. The tenant is my doctor and it's yet again. He's, he's back again. Um, what, whatever's going on here, I, I thought maybe it's the Jonathan Groff character. Maybe he's, he's obviously being scanned or he's being recognised by something or someone. Um, but yet again, you know, it, it's. I feel bad for it. It's, it's, it's been it's been upstaged here, in my opinion. It just he can't have a moment to breathe or just to do his own thing. It, it's it's I it's been harked down by the path. It's I get that maybe they're trying to weave the whole fourteenth doctor into his era, but I just think it's not. Like even me as a big, big, massive tenant fan, it's it just seems like oh he's back again. Like I actually kind of scoffed a little bit at this like point when I watched it. I thought oh there's David Tennant, but then after like a couple of seconds, I kind of thought about it and thought oh so he's back again. And then we know that Rose Noble's going to be back in again. I got a picture of that as well. And it's like we just know that he's going to be talked about. He's going to be referenced. He's going to be brought up again. And it's like I don't know. What do you think? I mean, the whole. Boy generation at the time we all said it, it it's like as if BBC or Disney or whoever's making the decisions is not fully behind the idea of shoot you got was the doctor because if they were they wouldn't be doing this now there could be an explanation as you said we're seeing things out of context here a little bit uh, we've just seen an, a trailer so we won't know what's actually going to happen until we actually see it, see it um, see the episodes but it is it's it's not fair on shooty i got to be honest even though i uh, when i saw the trailer i am a bit worried about him now but if you're going to give shooty the role to make a big deal about him being the first black doctor and all of this other nonsense that they come out with well then at least give him the at least give him the platform and give him the best chance to to do the job that he's been paid to do if you have David Tennant looking in the background, a lot of us fans are cynical, and we've said this. If it goes wrong, let's bring back David Tennant, and that's not fair. It's not fair. Uh, it's not fair. And and I've got to be honest with you, you know, I'm kind of sick and tired of seeing Tennant now, right? I uh, I I will always love him for what he did, uh, and I do love the fact that he loves the show so much that he did come back. It didn't work out the way I wanted it to work out, but. He still loves playing the doctor, but there comes a time where they say you put the cows to pasture, and it's time to put David Tennant's doctor to pasture. There are other doctors out there that haven't had as much screen time as he's had, and if you wanted to bring back other doctors, I can't understand why you couldn't. You know, Peter Capaldi was treated very badly in the end, right? If you wanted to make good with some fans out there, RTD should have found some way of bringing Peter Capaldi back. Now, I do believe there is a chance, by the way. I know Peter Capaldi has ruled it out, but in the current state the show is in, there, there's every chance that Peter Capaldi could come back if the script was right and he thought it was worth doing. But that's the guy, or Christopher Eccleston, which would never happen, unfortunately. You know, you could have gave those guys a chance. Or even, I know the Paul McGann one, fans are divided on it. They'd rather see him have his own uh, mini-series. But again, another underutilised doctor there as well. Um, but going back to Shooty, it, it doesn't bode well when you have the most popular doctor of the New Who era anyway uh, looking over your shoulder. So... I think it's a bad, bad, bad decision, to be quite honest with you, Cinnamon. I don't think it's fair on Shooty, and he deserves better 
to be quite honest with you. Especially if you're going to make a big song and dance about his race, which a lot of these people have in the fandom and the, and the media, and, and even RTD himself. So, you know, I find it disrespectful. But again, you know yourself, we're talking to brick walls when we mentioned this. You're racist for bringing up stuff like that. But it's the truth. If you don't respect them enough to give them all the tools to do the best job that you could possibly have, well, then what's the point? Yeah, and it, it's not even just this era as well. We we also saw it during the Wicked era. Every comic, you know, there was a comic that, you know, it was the 10th, it was the 10th and 13th, Doctor, they were constantly together on like loads of comics. And the game, there was a game that came out, then I... The tenth Doctor. There was a, there was this weird little obsession they had with pairing the thirteenth Doctor with tenth the tenth Doctor for some reason. So it's been like this for quite a while as well in in the extended media. And it seems you know again, I love David Tennant. He's my Doctor. I grew up with the tenth Doctor. It's I think even I'm a little bit like, <laughs> can we just like can we have can it not be the David Tennant show? Um, but of course, yes, yeah, so we got another scene see, uh, scene of I think this was one where the TARDIS is flying. Yes, it is. So we've got Millie that they're looking a little bit, I dare say, dopey, <laughs> a little bit doughy eyed. Yeah. Bit. She looks a bit like she looks a bit like you just farted in a cornflakes. Um, this, I imagine this is probably taking place like straight away. So I imagine when we watch the first episode, this will probably be what we see. And, and another thing, I thought I actually wanted to ask. Well, you hold on before you, before you here. move on, just just real quickly, get did you not feel? Because I want to ask you this. Did you not feel when you saw Millie enter the TARDIS for the first time, it felt a bit forced compared to what other how other companions have reacted? It didn't seem to be. It didn't seem. To, I don't know what it was. I just didn't believe. Yeah, it, it, I know what you mean. Yeah, it seemed like there was a bit of um. Yeah, it, I know what you mean. Yeah, it seemed like it was a bit delayed. Like it's like I mean, I suppose everyone reacts differently, but it wasn't like if that was me, I'd probably be freaking out a little bit more. She seemed a little bit more. Accepting uh, a little very bit more calm, like, oh, yeah, yeah, very calm. Yeah, well, maybe the maybe in fairness, though, because the inventor she had the Christmas, uh, the Christmas episode, and she's seen enough that maybe this was just like you know, Probably, but even yeah. Martha Jones, like her reaction, Billy Piper's reaction, you know, she comes running out of the TARDIS and runs around it, you know, it's even, even, it uh, Amy Pond. She comes in, then she gets an awful fright, doesn't she? She legs it back out again. I mean, maybe again, we're kind of seeing it out of context, maybe, but it just didn't feel right that part, that scene. Yeah, and I suppose another thing to bear in mind is that we we it kind of ended on a cliffhanger. So I suppose, you know, we we saw her walk in. She said, "Who are you?" And he says, "I'm the Doctor," and then it ends. Um, you know, we we've still yet to see you know the rest of the conversation. I imagine, like I say. This I imagine this is all from the first episode, so I'd imagine that this takes place straight away, and I imagine they're going to talk, and he'll probably do a little bit something a little bit similar to how he did with with, with Matt, where, where he gives a little bit of a speech and says, "Oh, you know, I, I got bored," um, and I think this is where he says, "You know, pick a time, pick a place, pick you know, any anywhere," um, and obviously we can see that we they're, they're kind of lifting it off. Actually, it's a bit, it's a bit of a, like a low gravity. Um, yeah, the beautiful all the colours, but. The lifting off here, like they're about to, like they're in zero gravity. The only um, thing that I like about this scene is actually the jukebox in the background because I don't know uh, people that are um, my age will remember that back in the day we had an obsession with jukeboxes like this. And uh, do you know the way they do the cheap tat in the pound shops, right? Yeah. So years ago we had the equivalent of them, and they were selling these little mini. Uh, little jukeboxes, right? So it was a tape. It was a tape deck, and I had a radio on it, and it was exactly like that in the background. And it even lit up like a real jukebox as well. So if you had it on at night time with no lights, it looked like there was a little mini jukebox in your um in your sitting room. So the only thing I like about it is the fact that jukebox. But see the colors. I told you again about the colors earlier. Look at the colors. We got purple there now. It's like as if the I don't know what it is. It's just like everything about this is like it's. I I just get the horrible feeling. Musical, musical, musical is what's coming to mind with this. Yeah, I mean we've already got one musical. We've had it once, and it's like we're in the Christmas one, and then it seems like 
the second episode, which will be the the, the Jinx Monsoon one, the the Beatles one. It, that, it's just going to be. I mean, you can see it there. We've got a, a little screenshot of it later, but they're all sat around, you know, all 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 hovered around the duct while they're all like in a recording studio. It's going to be mm. better. they're probably going to have. And I think there's like a yeah. I took another screenshot. There's like a Glee kind of like kind of like a Greatest Showman Aww. kind of moment where everyone's all singing and dancing. It, it's we'll get into that a little later. But uh, as we move on, you know, more examples. Of you know, again, the, the problem with this trailer is that it looks pretty, but apart from looking pretty, you know, it wasn't that many, I guess, character defining moments. There's no moments like in the 60s where the 10th or the 14th doctor said, You know, I, I'm sorry, don't know, but I'm not sure if I could save a life this time. You watch that and you go, Oh god, what's gonna happen? I didn't really get that kind of that moment in this one, it was just lots of pretty effects, beautiful effects. Um, you know, Jurassic Park meets Doctor Who. Um, uh, of course, we've got the whole thing about stepping on a butterfly. It's a cliche in TV and movie about, you know, if you can step on a butterfly. Or yeah, the butterfly effect. Change. Um, and I was speaking a little earlier, and I think the direction we're going in is supernatural. It, it's all about, you know, these like supernatural gods, you know, like the, the toy maker is a, is a form, is a, is a, is a god of some sort. And I think Jinx will be as well, because she seems to be able to control like, like these things that are wrapping around Millie. Um, all these things about legions and salt and everything like that. I th- and I think actually, you know, do you know what I mean? Do you know what's interesting about that is Fortnite right now, that new season is exactly that. It's gods and and myths of Zeus and all is in a Hades. Uh, you've even got um, what you call it? What's his name? Poseidon. Uh, you've got all of these now. As you know, Epic Games and Doctor Who. We're actually supposed to be collabing. Um, now, apparently, it's still happening. It's just that it's being pushed now uh, to be in line with this. Do not be surprised because this chapter lasts is actually while Doctor Who is running, right? It comes to an end as Doctor Who is, is, is starting. So do not be surprised, actually, if Fortnite, in their next update, when they go to Chapter 3, um, we see Shooty's doctor making the appearance in Fortnite because it's just interesting. Yeah. Because I mean, in I'll... the trailer, did you mention gods and myths and legends? And did you see? I don't know if you have it, uh, but I, I'll talk about it when obviously you're showing the next photographs. But did you see the did you see the uh thing that we put in the chat in um the group? The 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 Post by uh, RTD. Um, is, it, is it in there now? Where is it? Right, here we go. No, that's not the one. That's so RTD I'm a made a comment about the whole Fortnite thing. It seemed to be strongly rumored, and then he kind of said, "I think he was asked about it," and then it seemed like in a comment he, he kind of denied it and said it was never a thing. Of course, you know Russell red herrings and all that, you know, could we take what he says for granted um, or takes what he says with a pinch of salt, whether it be, yeah, you know. This is the quote here, know, right? I suppose it's a bit... Yeah, go ahead. Because this is, um, because I want, I want, I'm going to obviously address this on, on my channel, but, so, Russell put this up and he says, here we go, May the 11th, so proud of Shooty Gatwa and Millie Gibson I, I mean, look at them, what blazing stars, and this is just the beginning. We have epic tales to come, along the most intimate and heartfelt stories too. Monsters, gods, villains, babies, and a very precise distance with, a, with, a, with an emoji with the, the, the hand on the chin, coming soon. But it's that last mm. part. And a very uh, and a very precise distance, and then the, the as I said the the mm, emoji, you know the one where you're thinking the thinking emoji. So what the hell does he mean by a very precise distance? I mean, I, I think another thing we could also be maybe, but I think we could potentially be seeing maybe another trailer. I think it, it's not, you know. I wouldn't be surprised if we get another one because again another comment and he responded uh something on the lines of you know more or something so we it, it, 
again, he's, he's teasing a lot, isn't he? He's very cryptic, and he's hang on to, you really have to hang on to every word these people say. Yeah. Um, but, you know, uh, so we see, of course, you know, it seems this supernatural theme of changing things and, you know, Mavity, you know, Mavity was changed, to, or Gravity was changed to Mavity. So as we see, he steps on the butterfly, as the old cliche is. He, he's like, like, pulls the phases in, no. She looks like a sort of tree lizard creature. Um, so something yeah. has gone wrong here. Something has changed her. Um, and then he, he basically shoot, he pulls the face that I think a lot of Doctor Who fans feel towards the show right now. A bit of what the fuck, um, <laughs> to put it to put it simply. Um, but again, you know, more shots, more looking pretty. Yeah, lovely shot, lovely shot. But we've seen. But again, let's remind everybody that Doctor Who is not actually about that. It's about the writing and the characterization, character building. Oh, yeah, absolutely. You know, like same way that you know, we could, I could easily go back and watch sixties Who and not, you know, mourn about the effects because I'm there for the story. I'm there for the what the show is. It, Doctor Who never needed to be the most beautiful looking thing. It was always the charm of it that like, it was a British show trying to, you know, the BBC have always been better at making, you know, period dramas. Sci-fi was always where they struggled. So it's it's a nice bonus, but it was never and it was never a necessary thing that we needed. It was just it's nice to have it. But again, you know, stories and script is what matters. Um, but this one, I, know, I can't remember the actress, but she's been on a few things. She was in Luther, and she was good in that. Um, so you've got these, re this is the Regency episode. I think this might be episode six. Um, these sort of bird creatures, as we can see, they kind of turn into these, whatever they are. Um, again, so we've seen not many, you know, this is what, this is, have we seen many villains at this point? Whatever you said no. last night, it was a good one. I've, I've been looking. This is it. So we've got one villain here, the Duchess, I think she's going to be called. Um, uh, there's a green monster somewhere. But, you know, this is this is one monster, so we can tally that down. Um, Bridgerton, yeah, Doctor Who meets Bridgerton. Doctor Who meets Jurassic Park. Doctor Who meets... He actually, Millie Gibson's... She actually says that in the trailer. She says Bridgerton. And I'm like... I know everybody had a bit of a hard on for that show, and so did Cheryl. But I absolutely detested everything um, that I heard and saw about that show. So this episode is going to be a nightmare for me because I don't like this this crap. I mean, girl in the fireplace, the girl in the fireplace. I could tolerate that because it was set in France. But uh, I don't well, know, it's, it's a, it, actually, as you say that, it's a very good point actually because on uh, on Brendan's stream we were discussing this actually and we saw this, this picture earlier of you know of, of Shooty and then the David Tennant hologram next to him and he's wearing his Regency clothes so what we were discussing there was with this being in the same episode with this Jonathan Groff character that's basically seems like he's going to be a Captain Jack replacement um, you know is there a link there actually between that Pompadour, Madame de Pompadour SS ship or whatever that was is there a link between that and this story, maybe that's why David. Because you got to remember, that's an old picture of David Tennant from his tenth incarnation. So yeah. maybe is there some sort of when he get because it looks like he's on a ship as well, a spaceship. So maybe once he gets there, maybe like he gets scanned, and then maybe the ship recognizes him, like on some sort of interface, maybe. And then that's why this is the tenth Doctor is there. Um, that's just an example. Maybe that maybe I'm clutching at straws, but it, no, it, 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 it makes no. makes sense. But but let's let's ask ourselves the question: Would RTD be clever enough to actually? Ah, uh, there's Barbara Streisand. <laughs> well, I've forgotten which one was next, so it kind of jumped out at me. Um, but yes, it's finished on what you were saying, Matt. Oh, I was just saying, there's Barbara Streisand. But look, you could be onto something. I mean, as I said, I've got that funny feeling with um, other screen, the dinosaur one in particular. Maybe before the dinosaurs ended up on the spaceship. Because remember, and that we, we were all wondering why the dinosaurs ended up. I know they explained a little bit uh, in that episode. But maybe this is RTD expanding on that story, so kind of, kind of getting a prequel to that story. Mm. And it was a Ch Chris Chibnall story as well, and he wanted to bring Chris Chibnall back. Yeah, indeed it was, yeah. Yeah, first person he rang as well. Got to remember. 
But uh, as we've got here, you know, this is Jinx. I've got a condom up my ass, monsoon. Um, so we know she's going to be in at some point. Um, that remains to be seen. And of course, this is June Hudson. I didn't realize who it was at first, but yes, this is, this is June Hudson. So this was the costume designer. Uh, who worked on the classic series from season 18. So she basically designed and created that big red burgundy uh, outfit that um, that Tom wore for his final season. Um, it looks like she's about to be killed off here. So, it, But it's nice, you know, I thought it's a nice little throwback, I guess. You know, to RTD the, the and Stephen Moffer. But RTD and Stephen Moffer have done this in, in the past where they've brought people back um, from the classic era that worked on the show, either behind the scenes or actually, you know, as we see now, uh, that worked in front of the camera. So, yeah, I've always liked that little touch. I've got to be honest with you. Um, I, I, it, it, it's one of the things that I actually like this show for is that, you know, no matter what we say of RTD and, and Stephen Moffat, they do, they do try and get as many of these people in to their episodes, even if it's a, as an extra, they'll get them in. Um, and I think that's a nice touch. It's a way of saying thank you for everything you've done on Doctor Who, basically, is the way I look at it. Um, and it's nice, nice little touch. Yeah, and I think she's still quite active as well. I think she does the behind the sofas for the Blu-rays. So she's still fairly active uh, within fandom or, or, within, or within the show itself. Um, oh, this one, yes. I think this is going to be I'm going to estimate, I guess, that this is the Moffat episode. Um, and it, it's Millie shooting the gun. Um, and, that, yeah, that would appear to be the Doctor in the background stood on what's he Right, in but uh, have you noticed? Have, have you looked at the gun, Roy? Uh, do you remember Rose Tyler, Jackie Tyler, had, were, had similar guns? Jackie Tyler had a similar yeah. gun. I mean, I don't know. I'm just getting a horror horrible feeling that everything that we've seen is going to be somehow prequeled or something or there's something going to be added to it. I, yeah. But this shot, I mean, it's decent, but I mean, Millie shooting guns now, I mean, they better explain that. It's a tricky one, isn't it? it it's... You look at it and you think, well, what's going on in there? You know, what is she doing? You know, why is she shooting? You know, is she that? I mean, is there a war going on? I mean, it's a lot. It seems like there's a bit. It seems like they're a bit busy at the minute. Um, I and mean, that looks like a cleaner, one of the cleaners from Paradise Towers or something. Yeah, look in the background behind yeah. Millie's arm. Yeah. It looks like someone's taking a dump. <laughs> it does, yeah. But uh, is, I think there's a latest screenshot as well. Of Millie in the same outfit, and the planet she's on is absolutely decimated. And I believe that maybe this is something to do with the flux. Maybe they're like on a planet that was like ravaged by it, and um, perhaps. Um, so I guess we'll have a look at that soon. Um, I actually, yeah, a little bit more from the Beatles episode. I thought this was an adipose at first, for some reason. I don't know why, but I, I was just convinced it was. Um, obviously, of course, it's definitely the Beatles episode because we can see all the guitars. Uh, instruments in the background, but yeah, a little thought. I thought I thought I'd throw that in. Not much to read. Yeah. That there. Um, yeah, this woman. I don't know who this woman is. I mean, the, the prioritized her. Um, they've obviously felt that they want to put this in the shot of the trailer. Uh, that this thing on the left, whatever that book thing. I think this is the the, the wood louse, wood lice creatures that were like people were walking into, or like sucking people up or something. Oh, whatever that, whatever that was. Um, Whatever this episode this is, I wouldn't know, but I thought it was interesting. I actually I thought about this, and, and I said this earlier. If this woman had red hair, you'd probably think it was Donna because she doesn't look that far off from her. To be fair, um, yeah, young Donna. Yeah. Um, and yeah, this was another thing. What what was going on here as well? Again, more more things I think about supernatural. Um, you know. The lanterns explode, and I think that very. I think right after this, a glass explodes. Um, it seems like it was glitching actually. To be, it's hard to tell because this, this is just one screenshot, but if you watch it, it seems to be phasing in and out. Um, so I'm not sure what's going on there. What I mean, there's, there's a lot of snow in certain parts of it as well. I didn't get all of it, 
otherwise this would be would be a ridiculously long video um but i've got yes the big one who is this woman that's the question on everyone's lips some people are convinced it's jordy i think it potentially could be um anita dobson's character but then you know you've got to look is it a young looking hand like what is it looks like a young looking hand and have it a child like it looks like Whitaker's hand. If I'm quite honest, I got to, got to be honest. It does look like our hand. Um, if it's Whitaker, it's not going to go down well at all. Um, but you know what can we do? Yeah, what can I we kind do? Of hope it isn't. To be I hope. Um, you know what? If you're looking at the, the way the picture is right there now, if I was to look at the limited facial facial features, though, I would say Rory. Mm, yeah. It's either a male or a female. It's out for it, obviously. Um, but it's blurred out for a reason. Yeah. Of course, I just thought, I want to give it away. Okay. Of course, yeah. <laughs> I know. Yeah, I know you were. Your opinion was fair. you were very vocal on this about you know the doctor being scared. I, I it was a little bit kinder to it. I, I akin to this to kind of the second doctor in Jamie. You know, a little bit startled. Um, you know, I don't mind him being you know being you know surprised or, or having you know being jumped. But of course, you know, you've got to have the doctor be competent. You know, not in a ball in the corner crying. You know. Um, but of course, a monster. So this is the second, I would say this is the second, or not third villain. We've obviously got Jinx. We saw them bird creatures earlier. So this is the third villain that we've seen. I believe this will be in the first episode where they're on some space station. Um, surprisingly for once, Shoot is actually in the same clause. Um, so yeah, I would imagine this takes place directly after. Um, and of course, this shot, this one actually reminded me of Ghostbusters for some reason. Um, I don't know, just the town being flooded with, you know, gas or whatever, whatever this is. It seemed very Marvel. It seemed very Disney, this. I got very Disney impression. It seemed like something out of Infinity War. Um, something like that. Something Marvel related about it, I suppose. But there was a lot of Disney elements to this. Yeah, it looked like, yeah. Um, it looked like September 11 to me. <laughs> well, yeah, I guess I suppose it does, isn't it? It's quite scary accurate how much it's similar it looks it's it's what was going on there it does um, look it does London. look fairly similar if you look at the footage uh of of the actual dust cloud and the people yeah. running away from the coppers and all it does it looks very early similar but obviously you know they always kind of writers nowadays they kind of always echo things that have happened in the past sometimes even predict some stuff there you go well, the Simpsons is always rooted and popular for that. They're always getting stuff right. Now, this one, um, if you when you watch it in the trailer, uh, Ruby is stuck behind Shooter. You can't see her because it's blocking her. But also, we can see Rose Noble there. We can see Lethbridge do it, and of course, Lenny, the little guy from that children need thing. We know that he's going to be there. Why Unit are employing fifteen-year-olds? So I don't know. Is he supposed to be playing an older character? I don't think so because he does sound very young. Um, I think this is going to be the fifth one. I think this is the one with a new in Bernard, maybe. Um, but yeah, so again, Rose is back. And this is what, kind of, this is what I thought, you know, even if we didn't have that hologram of Tenant, you know, Rose, you know, I'm sure there's going to be a line of dialogue where Rose will be like, oh, you're, the other doctor's kicking up a fuss or something, or, or there'll, be, there'll be some sort of mention to it. I, I can't imagine that the doctor here and Rose there are going to have, you know, no, 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 no conversation about what's going on with the doctor or what's Donna doing at the minute. I mean, in fairness, um, I don't, I don't even think did Rose even meet this doctor. Now that I'm not actually thinking about it, because I don't think she wasn't there on the helipad, was she? She was at home. No, she went after the Starby. She was. We didn't really see her again up until the final scene when they're all in the garden. So does Rose even know that the doctor even by regenerated? Because, like, because in the trailer, the doctor sort of jumps out of his TARDIS. After he says, "Give me a love in," and then like that's that's when he hugs her because he's seen the the, the the hugging or something. 
I thought that. I just thought about that there. Did they even make note? Did she even? No, I don't think so. That this is the doctor. I can't even. I mean, unless I missed something, but I, I think that's maybe a slight, you know, plot hole there. <laughs> but um, yeah. And this oh, so this is what I was on about earlier. You know, th these two planets look a little bit similar. They look like there's like smoke or something like being siphoned off. You know, are these just destroyed planets that have been you know decimated by the flux? Um, there's a little scene later. I mean, again, another good shot. I mean, looks very convincing, but. There's another shot later. Um, oh, yeah. And this one, what is the Doctor doing here? Why is he screaming? Why is he annoyed? What is going on here? I mean, he's still in the jacket and in the, in the jeans and the top. So, again, it, it'll be, I imagine this will be the unit episode. But it, it's... That, that's the thing, isn't it? When you look at episodes and pictures out context, you look at this and think, what the hell is going on? What is he doing? Is he going to jump out? Is he, has he had enough? Is he packing it in? Um, yeah. What do you think? Yeah, it's a it's a fascinating shot, I've got to say. Um I will be interested to see what he is screaming at. He seems to be very emotional, actually. Um and you got the little blue light on top, um, which is flashing, which is a nice little touch. Um yeah, I'll be interested to see see what happens. But again, the lack of costume is kind of doing my head in. He seems to be in different clothes all the time, and I don't like that. Yeah, I'm not a big fan of this look either, to be fair. It looks too simple. Um, easy to cosplay, I'd imagine, but, you know, it works for the Ninth Doctor because it fits his character, but when I see him in just this, it just seems like some block off the street. It's like, it doesn't seem very doctor -y, doctor -y to me. You know, him just stepping out of a TARDIS, like, this doesn't seem like something he'd wear i don't know it's it's, it's a small nitpick i know but it, it just seems a bit uncharacteristic you know he's he's had the outfits he's wore so far the beatles one the blue suit that seems doctory the regency episode well yeah that's regency he's trying to fit in with the era um the kind of plaid jacket the first i think the first ever costume that we saw him wear that one looked doctory the one that we obviously saw him wear in the christmas episode that looked fairly doctory whereas this one seems a bit flat if i'm honest um not a big fan of this one um and yes again another fantastic shot i imagine this will be i think brendan said it as well this is the the sarah jane and fourth doctor moment you know the suit tech this is the equivalent no i was saying earlier that every doctor has a defining moment and i think a companion has a defining moment as well because often we see a lot of companions that will say oh why can't we just go back in time and solve it because this i believe this is the second one yeah, it must be because it's the Beatles and Mitch, Millie, Millie's wearing the same outfit there. So I imagine this is fairly early on in the season. So Millie's still learning about time travel and the ramifications of traveling in time. And of course, she must be, there must be a scene where she's like, oh, why can't we just leave it? Or why can't we just go? And the doctor must be explaining, you know, well, we can't because this will happen. And of course, you, I mean, I think Martha said it as well. Oh, well, the world doesn't end in here because otherwise i wouldn't be born and of course they all learn that time can be rewritten yeah and we've got a little bit more of it here um i mean i mean big ben still intact um but london buses so this is obviously clearly london um whatever the how, however this got in its state i guess we'll see um but this does seem to echo that moment of the doctor and sarah jane and we can see our millie's reaction there um it's a good scene. It's a good scene, I suppose. It's, you know, it is what it is, really. And I'm sure we'll see what it's like. Um, and yeah, this is, again, this ties into my point earlier about, you know, the godlike beings, and you know, this, you know, what is this? Is there a sign like sci-fi explanation for this? Because Jinx seems to be able to, you know, control musical notes to to, to, to suspend people in midair. Um, of course, I don't know. I mean, it again, it looks convincing i suppose um um but yeah maybe a bit too on the nose though possibly um you know i mean musical instruments i mean it seems very very cartoonish it's it's you know most again more it seems more example of these demigods supernatural mystery fantasy kind of elements that we're going to be going in um and another thing as well that it seems to be if you look on the imdb 
a teams that the Brigadier is going to be in it. Oh, it says Brian Blessed, um, and it says the left bridge do it, Brigadier left bridge do it, and it's whether that's real or not, I don't know. But it's it seems to me that I believe because it's very it's a very current thing, and I'm absolutely sick to death of it because it's 2024, and all everyone seems to do is multiverses, and I, I believe there's going to be a lot of multi verses in this whether that's whatever's happening here with the destruction of london and the whole thing earlier about stepping on butterflies and turning into creatures and um, mavity and gravity and things being changed all the time um it just seems to me that we, we might be stepping into that realm of multiverses and i'm not particularly happy uh, so i hope it doesn't do that because again i'm sick to death of it um it's way overused and, and, and there's a few shots earlier that i might link to that um, there's a few different pictures of Millie in different situations in different clothes, and she, it seems like I don't know, but um, yeah. So on this one, again, it's <laughs> it, it, it's a scene with the Doctor basically promising um, Ruby's foster mother that he's you know she's of course the, the concerned parent of you know is is she going to be safe? Can you promise me that? And of course the Doctor rather naively says, "Yeah, I'll, I'll promise you she'll be safe." As far as I'm concerned, I think the doctor by now should know better than to start promising people they're going to be protected. Because we all saw exactly. the eleventh doctor promise Rory's dad that they were going to be protected. And what happened? The very next episode, um, they were sent back in time and, and they weren't safe. Um, they didn't die. They just, but you know, they weren't able to return to their time or whatever that was. They, were, they, were, they, were, they had to live in the past. And I think there was a, a little extra scene. It wasn't filmed. But I think they did a drawing of it. I think Chibble wrote it actually, and it's actually a decent scene in fairness. And it's it's basically it's Rory's dad, and he's just he's on his own. He's doing whatever he's doing, and he gets a letter, and it's a letter off Rory, and he basically finds out through reading this letter that Rory has basically said, you know, like we're okay still, but this is what's happened. We're trapped in time and in the past, and we can't leave because it's a paradox or whatever the situation was, and it's you just sort. Of see the look on his face and it, it, it it's a very good scene but you know i just think the, the doctor should know better now he's lost too many people to start making promises like this i mean at least the ninth doctor to his credit didn't he in that in the scene where he was on the phone with jackie and he said and she said oh can you promise my daughter will be safe and he's like well i can't you know he yeah said, what was it he said i could save the world but i might lose you you know that was perfect then because that, that showed the realistic danger of it whereas it seems like he's too he's too confident. He's too and I know this is a confident doctor, but he seems flippant he's flippantly seems un, unaware of, you know, the danger of, of everything that's happened before. You know, you could lose her. And I don't know, what do you think? Maybe he's been set up that way so he does have a big fall and is humbled. You know, because there's rumours obviously so, yeah. we don't know if Millie Gibson's actually staying or going. Uh, there seems to be conflicted uh rumors. Um so maybe he is, maybe RTD is setting this doctor up for a big fall to get a bit of humble pie. Maybe Shooty's doctor does get a bit reckless and needs to be brought back down to earth and realise, you know, the consequences and then kind of understand what David's doctor has gone through, even though he says he does understand. But maybe this would be done so he actually gets it because he doesn't really get it. But... I don't know. I mean, he shouldn't be promising. Uh, I mean, that was a, a complaint I had when I saw her. You can't be making those promises, Doctor. Like, you you, you just can't. It was just something I thought was, uh, even watching, you know, I thought, it, it just stood out like, come on, like, no, that's a lie. That's stupid. You shouldn't be making promises you can't keep, especially of this nature. Um, nice top, though. <laughs> um, ah, but yes, so this was, was, I think there was another picture of this, and I can't remember. It was in the background. It was somebody stuck stood in the distance, and we didn't know if it was Lethbridge Stewart, if it was Kate. We, we just know it was a woman. It was blonde, and it turns out that this was Ruby or Lang because it's a similar jacket. Um, but also, as you can see, there is someone in the distance watching Ruby. Um, so I've got a feeling that like throughout this season, there are going to be moments like this where she's being stalked or maybe she's being watched by someone. Um, I'm not sure, but she seems, again, and this part of the Brandon, trailer is very quick because we've seen 
like three. Brendan three brought up the Meddling yeah, Monkey. We'll get into that here, but yeah, go ahead. I said Brendan brought up the Meddling Monkey. He thinks the Meddling Monk yes, is coming did. back. Maybe it's the Meddling Monk or it's the Hooded Lady because it seems like the clothes on this person are pretty dark. Yeah, I, think, I reckon she's got to be the, the hooded, this, this hooded figure. I, I can't see it being anybody else. Because um, I, I think, I, I, I believe as well, that this, this hooded figure, whoever this person is, is the whole thing about the legions. This, this big boss, you know, we had be meat referred to as the boss. I believe, I don't think that's Jinx. I, cause I, th I think for Jinx to be the boss, I mean, she could come back in the finale, but I just think for Jinx, if she was the boss, why would she appear in the second episode of the season that's and they're dropping two episodes as well on the first night. Mm. I, I believe it's this. I believe this big boss apparently. I, th I think it might be this hooded figure because there's more mystery. You know, we don't know who it is. It was this person. That's just what I think anyway. Um, but and, and, and another point I thought when I was saying earlier, we see different pictures here of Millie. So we've got a rather sophisticated looking Millie here with glasses and. She looks very nice, in fairness, but you know, there's quite a stark difference between this picture and that picture. Um, she seems a little bit more. Maybe again, she's like, looking at her herself. I mean, she's having juice and sauce there. Yeah. Um, uh, this is the point about multiverses. Uh, maybe, maybe it's I don't know. Maybe it's nothing. But there was quick when you watch it. These three images do appear very fast. Yeah, but look, go back for a minute, back for one second to the second image, that one there, yeah. Look, at there's a figure, no, 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 the other one, that one, yeah. There's uh, someone in the background there. See them? If you look over her shoulder there, there's someone in the background there. There's another dark figure in the background. Seems to See where the lamp, yeah, yeah, I thought, I thought see where the lamp is? Like some big bottle. I don't think that's a bottle. Yep. I think that's a person shaped yeah, like a it. person. Like the bit outline, the black silhouette yeah, of, a, uh, of, of a person. Yeah, I see it. I wouldn't be so surprised. I mean, again, so she's being watched. watched so she is yeah. being watched. You're right. I mean, she's definitely being watched by someone. And then you've got to ask the question then, why is she being watched? And again, then I said to you last night, it says again, why does this feel like it's it's the the companion is going to be the centerpiece of all of this again? Why can't it be about the doctor? Like it's called Doctor Who, not Companion yeah. Who. Yeah, we got this with Clara, wasn't it? Well, I mean, I think they even kind of took the piss out of themselves, didn't they? When they put was it flat was it flatline where they put I mean, in the in the opening credits they put Jenna Coleman's in first and then Peter Capaldi. Yeah. It's almost like they even they even knew back then that they were being self aware. Like, oh yeah, we're, we're focusing more on the companion, and, and it's a good point actually because again, why does the storyline always have to involve the companion? And why does you know why why does it have to be about why can't it be something that happens to the doctor even, you know, or, yeah. or, or something that happens, not or something even something that doesn't happen to them? Why does it always have to be the companion that has to be? Well, I mean, it did something did happen to the doctor happen to the during the Chris Chibnall era, but but. Thing about it is that that's not what we wanted to happen to the doctor. Like, but yeah, make it focused on the doctor. You know, you could do it where someone wants to get revenge against them for something that he did back in the past. That would make more sense. But always making the the, the companion the centerpiece of all of this. I, I'm I'm kind of getting sick of that trope now. I want the doctor to be the centerpiece. I'm not. It's not much to ask. No, it's really not. Um, and yeah, so this shot again, this is the same oh, one yeah. where she's holding the gun uh, and firing a weapon and shooting sudden what looks to be a landmine. And this is the point. I mean, look, it, it, the planet looks absolutely destroyed. Dust cloud. And it does look um, like there's a bit of a like look in that cloud. cloud. Look at the cloud there. It looks like a kind of a lightning bolt that looks a bit like yeah, the. I, I believe. Yeah, it was all yeah, because it was all pink and red looking, wasn't it? It was as it came towards the TARDIS. Yeah. I think this is the flux. I think this is the planet that was being destroyed by it. Um, oh, oh yeah. what if so, they're um, all back? Hold on. What if they're what if they're back? What if Shuey's doctor is back to help Whitaker's doctor 
stop the flux and that's what this is all about stopping the flux therefore then you know he's not rtd is not really actually getting you know what i mean yeah he's referencing the flux but he's trying to fix all of the stuff that chibs did and this is the way that he's going about it and then whitaker's doctor then which is heavily well, rumored I'm might be in it could come back then and and then all the doctors david whitaker's doctor and shoot his doctor then at the end of the season then fix the flux and then everything is great and then david tennant's doctor goes away because the boy generation was just a product of what happened during the flux uh that would explain that and then actually shoot he then gets to be on his own then because they explain the way david tennant and jody's doctor I just, I just had an idea that actually as you when you said there about you know someone getting revenge on the doctor they could have did it like this where you know the doctor's just doing his own thing and then like you know, these people are hunting him down because they, they hold him responsible for the flux these people whoever inhabited this planet so maybe like just for example you could have the jonathan groff character he's pointing a gun at him again maybe he's just kind of tracking him down maybe you know maybe the doctor is, is being accused of crimes against the universe or something. So that there you yeah. go. That that could have been a, something they could have. That could then that, then that would have been a storyline that actually involves him, and then there's yeah. a consequence for him. Because then that would because then it wouldn't be so much like you just oh he destroyed half the universe and got away with it and no one ever said a, no one ever batted an eyelid. Like there could be people out there who were perhaps keeping a close eye. You know maybe this you know the jinx that the, the jinxes of the world are people who hold the doctor responsible. And they could have had a whole thing about him being tracked down by some sort of time That's agency or, or something or another, you know? Um, but of course, we've got more of the more, more of the crappy costume. And of course, yes, we can see we've got Bonnie Langford oh. again. And you know what? Good. I, I mean, everyone says, everyone seems to say that she was redeemed. I don't even think she was particularly. I, I don't think she, it was nice to have her. And she was good in the episode, in fairness. But this like notion that oh oh let's let's, let's give her a better character. I don't think she was developed that no, much. She's not redeemed, but she's not redeemed yet. But to be quite honest with you, she was one of my worst companions growing up uh, uh, as a kid when I watched it, that era of Doctor Who. Um, she always irritated me. So the fact when she came back, I was pissed when I actually was announced she was coming back because I was like, oh, for God's sake, come on! You could have brought back many other companions. But you know what? When she did come back, I was surprised. I was surprised that the I was surprised at how well uh the character was received. And and I got to be honest with you, I was kind of like, yeah, I wouldn't mind seeing more of her character actually. Now she's not that irritating, maybe she'll grow on me. But yeah, she hasn't redeemed herself by any means necessary. I mean it's not her fault. You know, the the Doctor Who became a bit of a silly, oh, let's get just get someone in who's good at screaming. And you know, she passed the brief. She screamed a lot. Yeah, it just seemed to me that, like, when I watched it, she was just sort of stood at a desk. She helped Donna solve a problem, and then she was there to comfort him. But she didn't have this sort of big defining moment or anything that really helped the character. But it is nice. I think that, that she is older. She's more mature. I think Bonnie Langford is a more experienced actor than she probably was. Well, she's got to be. She, you know, yeah, it's, you know, years have passed. So I think, I think oh, it's been. Yeah. Now she's she is old. She's a little bit you know, less in your face. She's not doing all the screaming thing again. You know, just treat her like a normal person. And I think you know, in time. And of course, you know, we see her. I suppose this is this is that divine moment. You know, she's driving a motorbike. You know, she's driving the doctor. The doctor's not driving her. You know, she's in charge of the of the of the, of the moped here. Um, you know, so it's nice. You know, it's a nice moment for her to be. You know, she's actually doing something. That we would never, we would never really have seen her do anything. No, like before and it's good ago. that she's actually getting something to do. I know some people will probably have a problem with that and say, "Oh, look, there's the companion cart and the doctor around on our moped." So what, man? So what? If that, if that, if that little part, if that annoys you, then you need to really get a life. I, at the end of the day, you know, I, I have to say, I, I'm actually surprised that 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 was. The person that RTD decided to bring back, but you know what? She hasn't been bad since she came back, and if she gets a bigger role to play in the show, do you know what I'll say? Fair fucking play to her anyway. Do you know what I mean? She probably never thought she'd work on Doctor Who on TV again, and she's getting the opportunity to do it again. 
and and you know what in some ways as well she she would have she has vented her frustration about the way her character um was 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 betrayed back in the eight she wasn't happy with it at the time and and this gives her now the opportunity to actually show what our character could have done. Do you know what I mean? So I like that. I like that. And I like the fact they have brought her back older because it makes sense. She's learned a lot since then. She's had a lot more life experience. So she'd be a lot more measured. Do you know what I mean? So it does make sense to bring her back. I just hope this doesn't become a whole trope because we've had Ace back. I don't want them to start bringing back every feckin' companion. There is one companion I'd love them to bring back. It's a companion that has been, in my opinion, grossly mistreated uh, by the people writing Doctor Who. And that's that's Jamie. Right, that's Jamie. That's the character I'd like to see back. Right? It, it's absolutely... Uh, it baffles me why uh, that has never happened um, in New Who. Um, because, you know, Jamie is a very popular companion in in classic who and and longest serving companion by the way i know they tried to make it out that it was Yaz <laughs> yeah. Plank. it sorry, wasn't Yaz sorry, Yaz. Plank. yeah but you know let's hope it doesn't become a trope but look we it, give her a chance give her a chance anyway you know at the end of the day um we think it's going to be a train wreck anyway but if there are moments in there that we can actually you know and that's the thing. It's going to be moments, isn't it? But, yeah. I mean, shoot you again, Space. Look at the doctor's expression there. Looks worried. Again, she looks a bit worried. She's looking up at something. You know, they both look worried in that shot. Yeah. This one I thought was rather odd. Because I thought, what is, what is going on here? I mean... It seems like I mean he's wearing the jacket and the, the top again, but she. It reminds me. Is it, is she in different it's raining men. men. Hallelujah! It's raining men. The Jack yeah, Perry hat. Like some sort of music video, doesn't it? Yeah. Very weird. Very peculiar. Uh, I mean, he's looking up at the, at the sky and everything. Arms across, arms in the air. Big, big grin, big grin on his face. Like, it, it literally looks like <laughs> the break. I mean, again, is this is this another example of them breaking into song? Are we going to have another song here? Because it seems like it, it looks like something out of, out of a music. Oh video. no! But I don't want Doctor Who fans thinking that we're opposed to a bit of fun in Doctor Who. I, I'm not opposed to a bit of fun. If there are light-hearted moments in Doctor Who, bring it on. Do you know what I mean? But. I've got to admit, the tone of that trailer last night just gave me... I just thought of Glee and all of the high school musical and all of these other D Disney trope things. You know, that, that's the kind of stuff and all the Disney trope stuff that they've done. And, and, and that's what I found with this trailer. It's not inspiring me to say, yeah, this is going to be great. But I am curious. I've got to be honest. I am curious to see where this goes. I just hope it doesn't go in the bin. Yeah, I agree. I agree. I mean, again, we've got more... Ex I mean, this is, again, what I was mentioning earlier, another example. I mean, this looks literally something out of, like, The Greatest Showman, you know, more performing, not more people skipping and dancing, you've got water all over. I mean, you know... Go grease light. Like, yeah. Grease. Everyone, grease. Go grease yeah, light. It's, it's, go it's grease. Grease. It's, it's dancing. It's, it's, you've got everyone... Pop Everyone bopping along. I mean, you've got everyone surrounding shooty here. Like they're, like they're making music. They're in a record, recording studio. I mean, you know, and I think the tagline there was everything changes or, or something like that. I, uh, again, if it's good, it's good. I mean, I, in fairness, I will be on. I didn't even mind. I thought I'd cringe really bad at the uh, at the goblins. On. I, to be fair, I didn't mind it in fairness. It was when I watched it, you know, it was what it was. But I think if they're going to have it all the time, it's going to like. It's just going to turn Doctor Who into a constant musical. Like, do you know what I mean? It's just, it's just like this is a sci fi show, not some sort of, you know, Broadway. Oh, well, look, look. Eh. That seems to be multi multiple 
like like the show itself is going to be multiverse. There seems to be multi genres going on uh, in this particular season of uh, Doctor Who. Again, we're only seeing things out of context, of course. But what we have seen is not really inspiring a lot of confidence, I've got to say. I mean, as we said, everything looks beautiful. The shots look beautiful, especially that, that, that shot where Millie and, and the Doctor uh, come out of the TARDIS and they see London is absolutely destroyed. I think that is a wonderful shot, beautifully done. But that's not what Doctor Who was about. We keep going back to it. It's about the stories and the characters and the character de the, the development of those characters and well-written stories that, ha you know, we're, we like our little subplots as well. Some fans would just like the simple stories. It doesn't matter. But I do like the ones where you have to kind of think and uh, use your brain. There's nothing wrong with that. That's what great sci-fi does. It makes you think. It makes you question things. This just looks like high school musical dash you know, what was that glee dash in space like? Do you know what I mean? It's but look, we could be wrong. We could be wrong. The tone though is very Disney fired and that's what worries a lot of Doctor Who fans. Especially on this side of yeah. the pond. Because, you know, you Brits obviously are very protective of it. And us Irish fans, even though it's not our franchise, you know, we've grown up with it as well. And we are protective of Doctor Who. You know, we, we love the show, and, and a lot of the Irish Doctor Who fans, you know, um, you know, it's not getting, it's not having the same impact uh, here that I had years ago, and and it's sad, really, you know, because it, it's an easy fix, this, and I keep saying it, it actually is an easy fix, it's just, it baffles me why these people just can't sit down Take a step back, listen to everything that's coming in, say, do you know what? Maybe the fans are right. Maybe we have been going in the wrong direction with the show. And maybe we should, you know, uh, br bring it back to its roots. If you make good sci fi, right? And, it, and it's well written, got, got, got great character development. I don't care what, what genre you're a fan of. The bottom line is, great sci fi will attract people, right? The problem is with Doctor Who, it's becoming like all of the other mainstream shows now. And that is the biggest issue with this because it destroys Doctor Who is unique. It's completely different. It's not like other shows. So if you try to make Doctor Who like other shows and chase an audience that you don't have, how do you expect to succeed? I do love this shot though, uh, Cinnamon. This is this is probably one of my favourite shots. It reminds me actually of Trends a lot, even though I know it's not Trends a lot. Yes. But I'm just saying it reminds me of Trends a lot, where that uh, where Matt Smith's Tardis, you know, was dying and got bigger and bigger and bigger. But I do love shots like this when it involves the Tardis, and I, I like this shot, believe it or not. And, and I love how uh, beaten up the Tardis looks. It reminds me of of Hartnell's Tardis. Do you reckon this could be the 14th Doctor's TARDIS? Because I, I can't... I mean, I'm a, I'm a bit puzzled to which whose TARDIS this is. Is it Shooties? I mean, there's another TARDIS. I was well, again on stream earlier. We had a quote that was said, and this is a line of dialogue, look, the, the dialogue that the 14th Doctor said. I think it was when the TARDIS disappears. And he basically says, like, oh, I wonder where it goes. And he speculates about, like, oh, if it's found on a tribe... And then they worship for decades, and you know, then they try and bend it down, but then grow wise or something. And, and he basically, basically, what he said in, in Wild Baby Under, I think, basically, he sums up what this is. You know, it, it grows older, the world moves on. A little bit similar to what the Ninth Doctor said as well. You know, it's just a police box stood, in, stood on an old street corner. And it's, it's, just, I'm wondering what's happened here. You know, is this another TARDIS? You know, is this any, you know, Anita Dobson's Mrs. Flood seems to think, you know, she's recognized the TARDIS before. Are they kind of telling the story backwards out of sequence? You know, it, has she just like was it just a throwaway line? I can't, I can't imagine that. I think they must this, be doing something with that character. This TARDIS though looks very eerily similar. If you compare the photographs to Jodie Whittaker's TARDIS, um, 
this definitely looks like Jodie Whittaker's TARDIS, in my opinion. Uh, obviously, it's aged a little bit, and it looks, obviously, the colour has faded a little bit. But the light fixture, the little black sign, and, and, and the way it's narrow up on top there, and the windows are kind of nearly like the proper size that they should have been, because, you know, that's a running joke in Doctor Who with the TARDIS. The windows were always a bit off. This looks like Whittaker's TARDIS. This actually looks like Hortardus, I've got to be honest. If it's not Hortardus, it looks similar to Hartnell's as well. That's what makes me think that this might be 14s, because, again, if the uh, my issue with it is that if the Earth is under threat, I mean, serious threat, I can't imagine the 14th Doctor just sort of sat there and thinking, well, it's not my problem, my future in kind of will just deal with it. Like, come on, if the, if the end of the world is generally there, you know, give him a hand. I feel like it's too much... Uh, it's, it's too much like uh, a plot. It's a big, we, we, bit of an issue for me. Like, you just sort of. Or I'll throw there. this out. So I'll throw like this out. This, this is an interesting one. Now, this is this is just like, I'm just throwing this out, right? I'm not saying it could be in any way. It's just something to throw out there as well, right? But there there is actually another TARDIS out there. I think people actually forget. Now, it is a deleted scene, but there is an actual other TARDIS out there. So, uh, the Doctor and Rose be on the beach, and then the whole Metacrisis uh, Doctor. Now, there's a deleted scene where the Doctor gives the Metacrisis Doctor a piece of his TARDIS to grow his own TARDIS, right? What if this is actually the Metacrisis Doctor's TARDIS? It's, it's, well, it's certainly plausible, isn't it? I'm just throwing it out there. Or... Again, I'll throw another one into the feckin' spanner, right? It could be the War Doctor's TARDIS, or it could be the Fugitive Doctor's TARDIS. It could be anybody's TARDIS. <laughs> I'm trying to think. So many TARDISes out there, so many Doctors. I mean, you know, if they are going in this multiverse, yeah, this multiverse, uh, know, maybe they might be doing all of this. So we all, we all know yeah, we all think some multiverse. Now. All the Doctors are all living off in a splintered timeline. Maybe this is one of their TARDISes. Maybe, I don't know, God knows, anything's possible these days. Yeah, Jesus. I mean, it used to be, I mean, I mean, even just, it used to be that one TARDIS belonged to one Doctor. Now, you could look at that and think, well, it could be anybody's. <laughs> um, but yeah, so we've got another shot. And this one's of, of Ruby again. Um, of, in some room. I, I mean, is she, I don't know what's going on really, but it, it's, it seems like she's, she's on her own. It's all being lit up, whatever this is. I don't feel anything's about to happen. Um, but I thought it was something interesting. Um, of course, we've got the they've got that unit soldier back again. We've got Kate back. Um, I think there's a I think the TARDIS is, is, is being scanned or something. Uh, I'm not sure if I got the screenshot of that. I probably should have. Um, no, I didn't, unfortunately. But um, yeah, so the, right after this, is, the TARDIS is in the middle being scanned for whatever reason. Um, Maybe because they think there's another TARDIS out there. Maybe maybe the TARDIS has gone rogue. God knows. Um, but the TARDIS has been scanned for one reason or another. Um, so yeah, but this I imagine this is. Oh God knows. I, I, I think is this the. the I mean, it depends because if they're doing the whole Benny and Benny Bernard episode, and if they are going to go down this route of you know, this big militant, supposed quote unquote far right, you know, political group that's trying to take control of Britain or whatever you know I imagine this will be the episode with that um, I, I just hope I hope they you know they can at least do it objectively you know if you can if you make it obvious it's you know a parody it's just going to fall flat and it's not going to be received well and it'll just hinder my enjoyment of the episode because I can't I can't enjoy it when you're just making constant digs all the time do you know what I mean like I'm there to watch I'm, I'm generally there to watch the story and to hear you bash on about a certain point or to you know to try and morally look good i mean you know did we not learn the lesson there russell of you know what you said in in the giggle with that bloke in the street where, oh i'm right i've always been right well you know practice what you preach i guess um but we've got the final few screenshots of here of the doctor sort of breaking the fourth wall um giving a bit of a wink um you know, is this was this part of the trailer? Is this actually going to be in the episode? You know, is it? There's a lot of 
fourth wall breaking. We, we've got Mrs. Flood character breaking the fourth wall, talking about, oh, have you never seen the TARDIS before? We've got the Doctor winking here. You know, I'm, I'm a little bit uncomfortable. I mean, are they, are they trying to bring us into the story? Uh, is this, is this going to be a regular thing? They're trying to make us part of it. it uh, you know, they, it, ad- directly addressing us. I mean, I mean, it works once, but uh, again, like the, I like like the whole performances, the whole big spiel about singing and dancing. Is this is going to be another thing? They're going to be breaking the fourth wall constantly. I don't know. It all remains to be seen. Um, but yeah, so um, these are the last two. Of course, nothing out of the ordinary here. Doctor Who, original series, streaming on the 10th of May. Well, yeah, because this was... And again, you know, this was the Disney Plus trailer. So why on earth is the Disney Plus trailer really airing before we are? I mean, that's, I mean, again, maybe there's nothing in that, but I think there is. I, I think it's Actually, bit- there is something in it. Let me tell you something that happened. So when the BBC trailer went up, some eagle-eyed fans have seen that the trailer that the BBC actually threw up on all their official sites is also the Disney Plus trailer. What they very cleverly done is they've take, removed the Disney Plus logo and then they've cut it out at the end. So this little shot that you see here, after this, then it comes up the Disney logo. They actually stopped it dead in the track because if you watch the video back again, you will see that the the regeneration energy here stops dead, right? Because literally the next thing is the Disney. So even BBC didn't have their own trailer. They had to use the Disney Plus wow. trailer. Wow. And it just, I mean, I've got the next one here. I mean, look at that. That's what Disney, I mean. So that's what I'm talking about. The logo, Doctor the TARDIS it goes across it. Dead. But the BBC cut that part out. So that's the part the BBC cut out. So straight after the first shot that Cinnamon showed you there, folks. The second shot then is the shot that BBC actually cut out in the trailer because the regeneration energy just stops dead in its tracks. It's mad. Go back and look at the end of the trailer again that they've put up and you'll see it stops dead in their tracks. Yeah, I just so the Disney the wedding here, the home of New Doctor Who, and it, it's like it's almost the claim it's theirs now, and it, it's they're getting they're showing the trailers first. Like, oh, are we what's going on with BBC? Are we not? Are we not on the ball? Why are we letting them? promote it for us are we just sort of slick, sitting back i know it's again it's, it's how much control are these people getting and it's, it's how much you know like oh it's ours it's, now kind of thing it's kind of attitude yeah. you know okay maybe it's i'm sad. reading something i just think it's a bit unprofessional that the, no I mean, you're again, wrong you're, you're right i mean you're right it the is episode, the episode title we got the episode we found out that it was going to be called the church of ruby road from from a screenshot that leaked from them, wasn't it? They 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 announced yeah. the Christmas Day, whatever it was. So we found out the episode from them. Yeah, I wouldn't just be surprised if we get anything more from them because we're getting the trailer from them. It seems like they're in they're in the driving seat, really. Oh no, they're um, calling the shots. But yeah, big uh, time. Absolutely, and I, I think this was a gif, but it's not playing. But it was shooting salute. I thought and end it end it on there. Um, but yeah, um, it is, but it is, um, you know, looking back on the trailer, my opinion of it has, I would say it's, 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 it, it, my, I think my look on it went down a little bit after actually looking at it and breaking it down because there is a lot of things. I mean, even, you know, there was one of there of, of, um, of just of Ruby looking at lights and stuff. There's certain bits that I just that I thought, well, you know, that didn't weren't worth getting a, a screenshot of. But again, you know, compare this to the series five trailer. It was far longer, far more epic. The music was brilliant. The, the whole thing about you know the, the Doctor saying you know you know of all the time and all the space, anything that ever happened ever worked. You know, where do you want to start? You know, that was a great opener. And it, it showed all sorts of action sequences, all sorts of villains, Cybermen, Daleks, the vampires, the, the Creface or whatever that was. You know, and we've got, what, three, four villains that we saw in that, in that trailer, roughly, give or take. I yeah. can't count them, but there wasn't many. And, it, you know, and again, not many deep. The only real sort of big character moment was was, was that scene there with, with 
Shooty giving up promises that he's going to protect Millie. That was a bit of a heartfelt scene, an actual character sort of scene. But apart from that, it's just pretty effects. Look, look at the. I mean, maybe that's what it was. I mean, maybe we are getting in the trailer. Maybe we are being set up for another one. Maybe this was just to show off more special effects. But again, it all comes down to stories and scripts because that's what, at the end of the day, that's what matters. You know, whether it's good. I mean, you know, and all the, all the, and all the rest of that comes on the side. Making it look all sexy, that, that's all. Again, it's all an added bonus, really, isn't it? Isn't it? Yeah. When you go into the comment section, actually, they all bring up about the Keeper Safe promise. Also, on the official Doctor Who page, it, it, it has been viewed 332,569 uh, times. Now, I'm going to see... Uh, does a, doesn't Disney Plus have their, their own little channel here on YouTube? I'm going to actually see. Um, yeah, so on Disney Plus, the trailer has received 1.3 million views in 23 hours. Um, and believe it or not, it's only 2 minutes and 6 seconds, which the one on BBC is 32 seconds longer, I think. No, yeah, actually, it isn't. Hold on. Yeah, it is. It's 20. Yeah, it is. It's longer. Oh, wow, is it's it? About, it's 13 wow. seconds longer. The The one on BBC is 13 seconds longer, uh, the Doctor Who official. So let's see what it is. Is BBC One. Has BBC One normally put up the Doctor Who trailers as well? It'd be interesting to see if it's actually on BBC One. It's a YouTube channel. Let's see. Wow, I don't... What? what? It's not on BBC, I don't think. Interesting. It's not it's not on BBC. The last video that they put up was Gladiators versus Contenders Epic Battles. I'll check the videos there. I'll check the live just in case they, yeah, they might have read it live. No. Know. So BBC, and you can go back and look at the at BBC One official site. The BBC One now official site. Not the Doctor Who uh, uh, official YouTube uh, channel. This is the, the BBC's YouTube channel. And they have shown all of the Doctor Who trailers in the past. You can go and actually check it out. If you, go, if you actually search Doctor Who BBC One, uh, you'll see the trailers. There's ones from 14 years ago there. But the trailer is not on BBC One. That's never happened. Even the Whitaker trailers were on BBC One. So, yeah, there's something that's huge. So it's like BBC haven't gotten permission, it looks like, to put the trailer on their own, own channel, but they could put it up on the, the official Doctor Who YouTube channel instead. That's mad. Mm -hmm. That's mad. It's very weird. Has anybody I, actually watched the trailer that. for Doctor Who on BBC? Has anybody even knows the trailer on, on, on BBC for Doctor Who? If anybody's watching the BBC over the next couple of weeks, can you let me know if you actually see the BBC trailer of Doctor Who, if there is one? Because that'll be very interesting. If it's not being played on the BBC, then it's 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 we're going in a different direction. Streaming is the way. I, I, the, the day for the Christmas one, I remember seeing the Christmas one quite a lot as well. Um, but apart, from, I don't know if it's been showing anything about series fourteen or. I just think you know, even on YouTube as well. I'm seeing IGN of all channels even promoting it. I don't think IGN would have you know would have shown it on there. Like they showed the trailer on their channel as well, and I'm seeing reaction videos of people reacting to it. Lots of Americans, so it's like you know because obviously they'll be on Disney, so I imagine it'll be yeah. Like, the that's what they want. There. They want like, that it, crowd. It's really trying to appeal to a more American audience. They want that crowd and the reaction videos. I mean, yeah. I mean, we used to do reaction videos to trailers and, and the Americans never really did. Gary from Neurotics and a few others that we know used to always do reaction to the trailers. But the majority of the American fans never touched Doctor Who. Even in its heyday, you know, you did have Americans doing reviews and all that. But not as many as you're going to get now because it is a Disney Plus uh, show. But it's going to bring out more degenerates into this fandom that we don't need. The bottom line is, is that these these folks will never love Doctor Who the way we do, 
and they will love the fact that it has shooty shooty bang bangs in it and and uh, loads of lovely shots but won't really give a crap about the characters or the development because to them once they have pronouns and rainbow flags and 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 come out about who they are and all of this other crap that's what they'll care about and and it's a goddamn shame but anyway i'm gonna shut up now because the Ireland match is on in 15 minutes and we're playing belgium we're gonna probably get absolutely massacred uh against Be belgium but uh john o'shea a uh, former Manchester United defender is caretaker manager. So I want to actually see his first game and see what kind of tactics he sets us up with. Because if he's good and we actually get a result against Belgium, um, give it to him, then we could save a bit of money. He can't afford to get a bleeding great manager in. So maybe get someone that knows the Irish set up properly and, and has worked for clubs like Manchester United. So, yeah. Interesting coming up game. Coming up. Yeah, uh, yeah, right, folks. As I have a recording, we've got a it's international duty at the minute. So we've got, Eng we've got Ireland playing against Belgium at five, and I think England play Brazil at seven. So definitely tough opponent. Um, but yeah, I just, yeah. A, a final thought on the duty thing is that uh, you are right. I was looking at the comments on his post, and a lot of people are just saying, like, oh, I've never watched, I've never heard of Doctor before, uh, but you're in it, so I'll watch it. Or you'll have people say, well, I wasn't too fussed on Doctor Who. I didn't like it, but I'll give it a go. So you've got people who weren't even that asked about it now, suddenly because Shooty's there. Um, you know, they're gonna, willing to give it a chance. And it, it's, you know, and there's a lot of those comments. And it's like, I don't mind, you know, if you've never seen it before. But, you know, just have a look at yourself. It, it is, and, you know, I'm all for people finding the show, but, you know. Yeah, let it happen like naturally, though. People coming in, doing a quick wiki search. And thinking about Thinking, thinking they know everything about every character, every storyline, you know. See, yeah, we're just, going to be dictated to again. You know, but that's what's going to happen. We're, we're going to be told that we've been going. We're going about an hour and tw twenty-seven minutes. I think that's that's a good length. Uh, I think we've covered everything. Yeah. I think we've said everything that we've wanted to yeah. say, haven't we? Really, on these pictures. Uh, we so haven't. Thank you all, uh, honestly, for coming on tonight. Um, no problem. It was an absolute good, pleasure. Good anyway, so. Yeah, I was you know, I enjoyed it this for a while. You know, I thought, you know, do I do I, I, I don't? I, don't I thought, well, do I want to break it down? I thought, yeah. And I thought, well, who do I do it with? I thought, well, day in the day, I know Charlotte will probably be busy, maybe, maybe PD. But I thought, since I was on the stream yesterday, I thought, I thought I'll just ask you anyway. So it may as well because I know I want to bring you in at some point anyway. Um, so yeah, I've enjoyed this. I hope you have too, uh, and I hope you have as well watching. And um, thank you for watching. Of course. Absolutely, not that, not that you need me to promote it, but you know, go to Noel's channel, obviously. Uh, I'll, I'll put a link in there in the description somewhere. But of course, since I seem to be promoting everyone else better than I pro promote myself, you know, if, if if you're feeling, you know, kind, if, if you're inclined to, I would appreciate a little like myself. But of course, if you absolutely hate this, if you don't hate the both of us, then feel free to dislike it. <laughs> but uh, Exactly, you know, Bob, you're going to hate it. Knows, but, um, you better yeah, subscribe so to it. <laughs> Oh yeah! Oh, if you oh, you could do that too. You could be my biggest. I mean, I, I I say that because there was a Ricky Gervais show. I watched that, and there was a bloke called Dicky Anderson or Richard Anderson. He, he would phone in or he would text in on every show, basically just to tell them how shoddy it was and how how subpar the quality of the thing was. Every single show without fail, you'd always be there, you know, to tell them how shit it was. But if, if you feel like doing that with me, then feel free, go ahead. But I'll leave you to your own devices. We're going to head off now because we've got football. So thank you very much for watching, guys. Uh, I'll see you on the next one. Catch you soon. Bye-bye.